What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you how I built a scoreboard back in 2019 featuring a wireless controller, bright lights, and a super loud horn. Let's go. When I was in elementary school, I ran the scoreboard for local recreational basketball games. I always enjoyed seeing the digits change and especially like the horn, as every little kid does. Now fast forward to 7th grade, I got the idea to make my own scoreboard. I had already owned a scoreboard at the time, but it didn't have many of the more professional features that expensive scoreboards had, such as a wireless controller, bar style digits, and a horn. So like every half insane maker, I decided to make my own. Now here's the scoreboard and its controller. It displays time, score, period, possession, and bonus. Now let's turn it on. Once the scoreboard is on, I just flip the switch on the controller to power it on as well. And with both devices on, the scoreboard lights up. Now here are some of the basic functions. To start the clock, I flip this switch on the bottom right. Up to start, down to stop. Here's what it looks like on the scoreboard. I can also set the time to whatever I want by pressing set, then time, and then typing in the time I want with the keypad. Adding score is very easy too. Here, home is in green and guess is in red. I can add score in increments of 1, 2, and 3, and I'll just subtract score. The buttons for possession and bonus are here as well. Now I can also set score by pressing set, and then selecting either home or guest score. I then just type in the score I want, and press enter to set it. And finally, my favorite button. Now here's a quick view inside the scoreboard and its controller. Now this is the inside of the scoreboard. To the right, you can see the power supply and the wall socket. Right above it is the Arduino Uno, along with the wireless module. Now this attaches to the antenna, connected to the back of the scoreboard like so. Over to the middle is the relay, and close by is the horn itself. Now to power everything, and make it easier to swap out high voltage components, I added a power bank. And finally, you can see all the lights in the front of the scoreboard. Now onto the controller. Inside the base, there is a power circuit to power the Arduino Mega, as well as another antenna to connect to the scoreboard. The front of the controller contains the more complex electronics. Here you can see the keypad, the screen, wireless module, switch, and of course the Arduino Mega. Okay, on to the build. And the first step to this project was of course planning it out. Since it was a considerable investment, around $400, I had to ensure that the money I spent was being properly used and not wasted. Now, once everything had been planned out, I then began designing it in Adobe Illustrator. The scoreboard would be 2 foot wide by 1 foot tall, making it small enough to carry around. It would also be made out of wood, which would make it lighter and easier to work on compared to plastic or metal. Next, I ordered all the parts off of Amazon, and bought an Arduino Uno to be the brains of the scoreboard. I also bought hundreds of red and yellow LEDs to make the digits. Now I ended up changing these LEDs out for these WS2812B adjustable LEDs, for reasons I'll get into later. To power the LEDs, I bought a 5 volt, 5 amp power supply that I ended up switching out later on as well. To communicate between the scoreboard and the controller, I used two NRF24L01 modules. And finally, I bought a Federal Signal 350 horn, the same one used in professional scoreboards, along with a relay to turn it on and off. The scoreboard front was made from quarter inch MDF, again being two foot wide by one foot tall. Now the sides were made from half inch wood, being six inches wide to allow the horn to fit. A cutout was made on one side so I could install a power socket, as the horn required 120 volts AC, or wall power, to work. This socket also ran the power supply that ran the Arduino and the lights. Now onto the controller. The controller uses an Arduino Mega and an NRF24L01 module to operate and communicate with the scoreboard. To receive inputs, I made a 7x4 button keypad, which the user would use to control the scoreboard. To display input to the user, I added a 16x2 character LCD. 
and besides an extra button for the horn, and two switches for starting the clock and powering the controller, that's it. With all the parts bought, it was time to actually, well, build a scoreboard. So I took a trip down to the shop.build to laser cut all the parts. I went in with a bunch of wood and glue and came out with something that slightly resembled the scoreboard. Anyways, I laser cut the front of the scoreboard out, along with the diffusers made from clear acrylic. Now I wanted these diffusers, which the light would shine through, to have a frosted appearance. That way, when the light shone through, the whole digit would illuminate instead of just the individual lights. And it looks way cooler, in my opinion, this way, and I really wanted to achieve this look. So, with the help of one of the employees there, I used a sandblaster for the first time and gave the acrylic a really cool appearance. Unfortunately, the acrylic didn't work out as I hoped, and again, I changed plans. Now back to the shop. The whole juicy bean cut into the digit segments would later house the LEDs. Here's how the segments would look when finished. I also cut out the controller at a quarter inch wood. Here's that all cut out. Now the final thing I did was cut out the words home, guest, and period from white sticker vinyl. These would act as team names in the scoreboard. Back at home, I painted the scoreboard and added the vinyl stickers. Here's how that looked. I also started assembling all the LED segments. Alright, so it's the next night here. We have the scoreboard here. We are starting the drying process of the sides here. So you see we have all the LEDs installed here. Uh, they are just with hot glue. Um, hope to improve that in the future. Uh, but for now, this should work. Uh, and yeah, uh, we will probably have to sand down the edges like that because we don't really want that. It's not going to look super good. Um, we do also, you can't exactly see, but have a little bit of a wet to that. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Now here's where I ran into some issues. My original plan used around 312 LEDs, each which I would have to individually solder together. Now that's a lot. I also had to wire up these LEDs to the Arduino, and while there are many ways to control multiple LEDs from just a couple pins, it would be a lot of work and a lot of soldering. So I modified my original plan and bought a set of WS2812B addressable LEDs. Now these LEDs were amazing as not only were they super bright, but I could control all of them with three pins. Perfect. With these new lights, I then began assembling all the digits I needed. These still took a while to solder, but in hindsight were way quicker to make than the individual LEDs would have been. Now did I mention that they're RGB? Yeah, I can change the digits to whatever color I want. It's pretty cool. Here's where I ran into my second roadblock. The acrylic pieces that I cut weren't that effective, and on top of that, they were slightly too loose in the holes that I cut for them. So again, I changed my plan and decided to 3D print the diffusers. I went through multiple design iterations before I finally decided on some that seemed to work well enough. I had to find a balance between making the digits bright and diffusing the LEDs, which in the end I think I was able to do. Here's how the board looked with a few of the diffusers in. After a week or two of soldering digits, I finally finished them all. Almost 500 wires had to be cut, stripped, and soldered. I then glued all the lights in and tested them out. Almost forgot to mention, I switched out that 5 volt 5 amp power supply for this 5 volt 20 amp power supply. As at full brightness, I calculated the power draw of the LEDs to be around 8.4 amps. Anyways, the LEDs worked, uh, sort of. Now for some reason, they would flicker sporadically and often not work at all. Okay, here we go. We're going to flip the switch and test out the horn. I also worked on the controller. The most challenging part by far was the code, as the scoreboard is actually completely run by the controller. Now, let me explain. This type of communication is known as leader and follower. In this scenario, the controller here acts as the leader and the scoreboard acts as the follower. The controller sends all the instructions to the scoreboard, and the scoreboard receives all the instructions and processes them. The scoreboard never sends instructions to the controller. Now this means the controller is the device that does all the hard work, like keeping time, score, etc. The scoreboard only displays the data that it receives from the controller. Okay, so here's the almost completed uh, scoreboard controller slash remote. Uh, it's going to be controlling the scoreboard there. If you do have plugged in, we don't have time in yet. We'll work on that way. Later, H for home there, G for guest, and P for period. Just a demo, you can hit home plus one there. That's home plus one. The next button here over to the right is home plus two. And the third button here is home plus three. This is for possession, and that's for bonus. Period's one, so if we hit the period button, we'll increment the period by one. 
the reset, you just go to 9 and it'll reset to 0. So I'm going to set it as period 2. Notice that it says period 2. Set does not currently work right now. You can't set anything yet, but that is coming soon. Anyway, that's about it. Eventually, after a few months break, I figured out the issue. Since I was using an external power supply, separate from the Arduino, I had to add a common ground between the power supply and the Arduino. One wire caused me months of delay. One wire. With that issue fixed, however, the scoreboard was practically done. With a few tweaks to the code, the scoreboard and controller were both finished in November of 2019. Well, that's about it for this project. As usual, all code, files, schematics, and images are linked down below in the description. Please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions, as I would love to hear them. See you next time.